Well, I hope you're having fun with me so far. I'm having an absolute blast. I'm totally in my element. I love doing this stuff. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is we want to set up some panel options. So we just had a whole discussion on customizing the Photoshop interface and arranging the panels and getting everything all sorted out the way we wanted to. The next thing that I want to show you is how to go about setting some options for some of our specific panels. Let's go and take a look. So I'm going to head to my swatches panel to get us started here. This guy right here, of course. Now, you know, if you want, by the way, you can expand everything out so you're not dealing in, in these tiny icons. It's entirely up to you. It doesn't really make a difference in terms of how we're going to work here. So I'm going to head to my swatches panel and I'm actually going to head to the swatches panel menu, this little doodad right here in the panel's top right corner. Go ahead and click on that guy. And what we want to do is we actually want to change the color palette that we have available. So the set of colors that appears inside the swatches panel. So the set of colors that I see here right now are the default swatches. But if I pop into the palette menu, as you can see here, we have a ton of available color palettes. There's all kinds of different specialized color palettes that we can make use of. And then down towards the bottom here, we have web hues, we have web safe colors, we have web spectrum there as well. So there's a bunch of them related to web design that we can actually make use of. But I think for our time here together, I think we'll stick with web safe colors, even though we don't necessarily have to stick with web safe colors in our designs. That's the palette that I'm going to load in here. So I choose that palette and then Photoshop brings up a warning here. Whoa, hold on a second. Replace the current color swatches with the swatches from web safe colors. Now, if I click on append, what will happen is the web safe color palette will get added on to the list of swatches inside the swatches palette, which you may want. Or if I click on OK, what will happen is the default set of color swatches will get replaced with the WebSafe color palette. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And now I have available to me all of my WebSafe colors, my 216 color WebSafe palette. All right, so there we go. I wanted to make sure that we had that in place. All right, now the next thing that I want to head to is the styles panel. Look for your styles panel there. You should be kicking around in there somewhere. And I don't know if you know about the styles panel or not. Basically, in a nutshell, it's special effects. And I'm, I definitely want to work into the, the styles panel. I definitely want to work uh, the styles panel into our web workflow, some different special effects and web related effects and so on. So once again, if I head to the palette menu, we have a whole smattering of different styles or groups of styles or groups of special effects that we can load in like buttons and abstract styles and glass buttons and text effects and all kinds of cool stuff. And you'll notice there, mine's getting a little cut off there, but we have web styles. So of course, that's the guy that I want to load in. So go ahead and choose that guy. And once again, we have the option here to append the styles or replace the styles. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK to replace the styles. And now we have all of these kind of funky, cool looking web styles that we can make use of in our design. OK, very lovely. All right. Now there's one more palette that I want to go and set some options for. Bear with me here. I hope you're enjoying this here. I'm going to head to my info palette up towards the top. And what I'm going to do is head to the info palette menu and then down to panel options. The very first choice there. And that's actually going to bring up a dialog box here that we can work with. OK, now we have first color readout and then we have second color readout. What the heck are they talking about? Well, here we have RGB and it says 8-bit and then we have CMYK and we have 8-bit. If we actually had an image open, when you hover your mouse over top of the image, you'd actually get the RGB color values and the CMYK color values, at least in my case anyway, which is really handy, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch my first color readout. Mine happens to be on actual color. And you can see we have a bunch of choices here. Grayscale, RGB, web color, HSB, CMYK, and lab, as well as a few others. So I'm going to switch to web color. 
And that's actually going to give me the hexadecimal color values, which is fantastic, again, especially related to web design. And then the second color readout, I'm going to leave mine set to CMYK. Yourself, you're probably a normal human being, so you'd probably switch yours to RGB. But I should let you know <laughs> pretty early on that the way that I think about color, and this is just a personal thing, I think I'm a little bit crazy or wacky or whatever. I'm not normal, admittedly, in this regard. How I think of color, even in everyday life, when I'm not designing something, is I think in terms of CMYK, right? I think it comes from my print background, but even when I'm like painting my living room, I'm thinking in CMYK. I'm going, well, if I add 10% cyan and just a little bit of black, like maybe 2%, then that would really give me the color that I'm after, right? And I try to talk to my wife in this way, and she doesn't know what the heck I'm talking about. It's kind of embarrassing. But anyway, so I think in CMYK, even when I'm designing something for the web, my brain is still thinking in CMYK, even though the web is in RGB, of course, right? So that's why I'm going to leave my second color readout to CMYK. It's because I'm a lunatic. That's why. All right. Now, enough on that. Down below that, we have the mouse coordinates, ruler units. Make sure you're set to pixels. You should be on pixels there anyway, but just double check. And then all of the options that we have below there, scratch sizes, efficiency timing, uh, Adobe Drive, all the rest of it. I'm going to make sure all of these checkboxes are turned off, are deactivated, and then go ahead and click on OK. And that sets up our info palette. We're now ready to roll. So we set up our swatches, we set up styles, we set up the info palette. I hope it's all happening here for you.